Rill, Torb capital of North Wales, on a particularly wet and windy morning in July. Hi, my name's Anthony Parry and I own and operate the Anglin Charter vessel Jensen out of Rill in North Wales. Jensen is a fully equipped offshore 105, kitted out with a wide range of quality fishing tackle provided under a sponsorship arrangement with Abu Garcia. Rill is essentially a spring and summer venue offering everything from offshore wrecking to inshore smoothhound fishing with a range of other opportunities in between. But first things first, to get the best out of any day you need quality bait. So half an hour spent feathering up some mackerel should be seen as an investment rather than a chore. And enough for the rubby dubby too. That's the rubby dubby going over. Okay lads, when you're ready. Well today we're supposed to be taupe fishing. As yet nothing's happening. We've got the right size right size tide for it, we've got the right time of year, we've got plenty of rubby dubby down on the anchor, we've got plenty of fresh mackerel down for bait, we've also got a few small rods out scratching the bottom for other fish. We've had a few plates, we've had a few uh, dabs, we've had some nice gurnards, beautiful looking fish as you can see here, nice bright blue fins on them, really nice fish. This one's about three pound in weight, uh, we've had a few dogfish, white in, as yet no taupe. But like I say, we've got the right time of year, so we can just sit out and wait. We'll just show you a couple of different ways of baiting up the toe. The simplest way, small joey mackerel. Take the hook through the bottom jaw, out through the head. You can put a couple of slits down the flanks, let the blood ooze out if you want, but that's fine, that's good enough. Right, that's one way. Right, so we're using mono traces of about 150 to 170 pound breaking strain. Reason for this, if I have to grab hold of it around my hand like that, if it's wire, it's very sharp and it can cut into my hand. Mono's a bit more gentle and I can grab hold of it better. Now another way of baiting up, we've already shown you one. Again we've got a mackerel. Just take the tail piece off, put the hook straight down where you've taken the tail off. Bring it out. The hook pointing towards the head again back in the hole where the lines come out same again just like down in your socks bring it out just by the dorsal fin there just by the front of the dorsal fin and just ease the line back the hook stands up on top of the fish a lot of times tope will grab a fish and they'll hit it from the top like that the hook's there in the right place on a boat this size it isn't always easy to lean over the side to tail a fish so Tony favours a purpose built landing net made by stainless steel Steve Batchelor okay. yeah. rod out, rod out well done Brian what he also favours is a weighing sling to minimise damage to the fish. Just slide the tope in and hook the handles onto the scale. It's, uh, it's a male fish, you can tell by the claspers here. Female just looks like that. It's 31 pound 5 ounces that one. Okay, just put it back. Just launch them head first and they go down. Another way, we've got a slightly larger mackerel this time. Take the tail off. Cut it in half on an angle. So you've got two pieces now. 
both cuts on an angle like that. The head end, as before, through the jaws. If you want, you can make a small flapper out of that by just cutting up there. There's no need to do this, some people prefer it. Just a small flapper piece. Take that bone out there, so you've got two little pieces flapping. And then the final one. Same as before, where the tail's been taken off. Straight down, as deep as you can. And out with a hook. Again, if you, can, if you wish, you can flapper that piece. One reason why we don't flapper them too much is it attracts a lot of dogfish. With the loose bits flapping around, they're very easy meat to chew on. So I, I tend to leave them whole like that. There's four different ways of baiting up. Right, we'll just show you how to uh, set the reel. We've shown you how to bait up. There's a cone end piece going over. Dropped it at the back of the boat, so there's a little bit of a slap bit. So we just let it run the tide. This is an Abu 7000, very easy to work with. Thumb on the spool, push the button in, release the spool, just let it run down to the bottom. Very, very slight bit of tension on the spool to stop it overrunning. We've hit the bottom, we've got ourselves a bit of slack line now. Turn the handle, that engages the reel. This funny star shaped thing on the side is called your drag. We turn that anti clockwise and that slackens the spool off. We want this fairly slack so that it's strong enough to stop the tide taking it but slack enough for the fish to take it. On the other side, we've got the ratchet. We engage that. We've got a nice click. We then put the rod down and leave it. When a fish takes it, that should go screaming off. Right, we've got a fish just run off here now, it's just stopped. So what Rob's going to do now, he's going to check the reel. So you want to engage the reel, don't you, tighten the clutch up. So he's just tightening the clutch up now. He wants enough tension on it. He wants enough tension on it to bring the fish in. But also so the fish can have some line. Just run. So he's just tightening that up now. He's knocking the ratchet off. He's going to wait for the fish to hit him again and he's going to strike into it. Yeah. Now what's happening now, you can see it, the fish is on and as Rob's winding it's actually taking line out. You'll see the level wind stop when the fish pulls. the level wind stop briefly there that's the fish pulling the idea is it stops and takes the line it's supposed to be the middle of summer though you wouldn't think so from the wind noise on the microphone and the rain affecting the camera lens early summer in particular is a good time for the bigger female fish at rill and by big that can mean near record proportions my personal best soap came in 18 foot of water weighing in at 71 pound 5 ounces and I've seen one taken in a commercial gill net weighing in at 93 pounds. Later on in the season, around mid to late August, early September, we get a second run of smaller pack tow. These fish normally average around 10 to 12 pound, with the odd fish going to 20, maybe up to 30 pounds. By mid-September, the tope have almost gone. Late October, early November, we're looking at running up to the River Mersey for the cod, and that'll see us through the winter months up to March. We're straight back, yeah? Are you having a run there, Mark? Yeah. 